Hello dear ones, it's, it's Alice, I am of the stars, and I wanted to talk a little bit today about the male drive, the feral male drive to, uh, to acquire and hold territory, which I ha haven't really discussed per se before, and but yet I've run into three instances of it uh, that we might put in perspective. First, I'd like to say that it seems that the, the awakening process is bringing these drives to light. And so they're expressing themselves through the astral plane amongst men. And my intention in putting this forth in a video is that men's minds might be put more at rest about it in case they run into it and become aware that they're doing it. Because I think all men are doing it to some extent. So, one instance that I ran into recently was when I was traveling out to the desert. And I stayed in a room on a weekend. Of course, that's always just a little bit chancy because the feral drives uh, of, of, of the newest sphere are uh, sort of ratcheted up on the Friday and Saturday nights because of, um, because of the, the uh, drug use that happens, especially hard drug use, such as vodka, bourbon, uh, and scotch. And then the use of the um, often I illegal uh, recreational drugs that are considered hard, such as opioid, uh, those pills, you know, that are sometimes prescribed. So, one such instance was when I was traveling to the desert some while back, and I stayed at a motel uh, where next door and around the corner were staying a young couple and their very young baby child. And, um, as the night went on, um, their feral drive to sexuality increased, and they acted accordingly, it seems. And uh, at the same time, a person who uh, who was far, far away, hundred more than a hundred miles away. Um, took an interest in me on the feral plane and sent his astral body to within a mile of where I was, uh, where it was intercepted by the, the man uh, of the couple that were exercising their feral drive to sex. And so, and so this person, this second male, was, it was almost like he was, his astral body was bounced and jounced around. The attack I sensed as being not a mortal attack or um, life-threatening, but rather uh, a warning attack that, that I saw the, the one attacking male bouncing around the body of the other astral form of the other male and who was so shook up by that that he immediately zoomed back to the place where he lived back to the body. So there, there is a, an instance of, for no particular reason, of a, of a male def defending his territory, especially his spouse, uh, from another intruding male on the astral plane. So, and I found that very interesting because I don't think I've ever uh, seen a woman do that. Women just don't seem to have that drive to defend their territory at such a distance. They want to defend their own home, their own nest, but they don't want to, um, they don't have that long reach of uh, acquisition in their territorial instincts. So there's that. And uh, there was another instance uh, some while back that was more serious to me. Um, I was staying at a place that I had paid for for a while and uh, it was just as I began to stay there and the place was very uh, close, like adjacent to 
a house where a couple lived and the place where I was staying had been uh, the, lived in by the father-in-law which meant to me that the couple was used to coming over to this this place that I rented and treating it as as part of their own territory you see and then the father-in-law passed on and then they began renting it out right so uh, I had rented the place and I was still not at home in it um, one of the problems with the place was there was a downstairs door that opened outward from from my apartment or extension into a work area that was in was inhabited by the couple so there was no real way that I could uh, secure that door from from my side and further in the door was this a large dog uh, doorway that couldn't be secured so access while it could be locked from the outside door on the other side of the office access to my quarters couldn't be secured for me personally from whoever could get into the into the office right so the very first night I was there I noticed on the Claire plane that the man in the household had drunk quite a bit of vodka um, and vodka is one of those uh, hard drugs that um, that immediately short circuit the the lower mantle body down to the um, like inferior low position of the desire elemental, and that activates the feral drives without the um, inhibiting. Uh, instincts of the lower mental body which sees to things in the world you know the practical nature of our activities so in other words as people are always saying drinking vodka short circuits the brain and that's what happened that night the man began to have uh, according to my Claire like visions and hearing he started to have visions of something that had happened to him in his ch in his childhood, he had had a habit of being a peeping pee -pee tom. Tom. Now, be being a peeping tom has two qualities to it in the feral drive category. One is the desire for sex, and uh, the second is the desire for territoriality. So you're intruding on a woman's territory so as to uh, have sex with her. Um, so, so this person had had that quality and then apparently a, a, a catastrophic thing had happened to him in his teens. He had intruded on that territory of that, of that female that he was used to uh, uh, being, pe doing peeping tom uh, activities with and had actually raped her and then he had been caught out by the community and had been subject to social opprobrium everybody despised him for it and so all his life he was dealing with this low self-esteem that he felt because of an early young person event and here it came up again, right? It came up again. The possibility of being a voyeur, a voyeur, a peeping Tom, had come to him. And um, as it turned out, uh, it, it, it rose up, it surged up. This samskara just became very active in his consciousness because of the, the, the vodka. And uh, he had intention first to to have sex with his wife, which he did, and then later he had a plan to come and um, and get through that doorway and repeat the early young adulthood um, a wounding, soul wounding that happened to him by raping me and maybe killing me if I resisted. Right. Well, this set me on edge, <laughs> especially since it was my first day there. So I. Uh, 
I jimmied up the door so that with pots and pans and things like that so that if he should try to open the uh, the dog door or if the door should be opened outward towards his office by him then I would know right away because it would make a lot of noise you know and so it was booby trapped not not I couldn't secure it but I couldn't make sure that I had an alarm if anything happened and nothing happened that day right which was great so so the next day I went out and when I came back some things were different in my apartment the first thing was that the door of the closet had been closed now I had left the door open so that my cat could have a little place to stay in there away from everything and sort of a hiding place and so I had fixed it up very nicely for her and the door was closed so she couldn't get in and the second thing that happened is that uh, on a steak knife and a sharp fork that I had bought the day before which were the only weapons I had or something that might be considered a weapon in the apartment they were missing and it was very obvious because I had very few possessions there so my conclusion that I drew was that my territory had been intruded upon the weapons had been removed because uh, because he had an intention to assault me that night that was what I thought or as soon as possible in other words he had a plan and he had implemented the first part of the plan and further that he thought that that territory was his territory that he had a right to come into any time and change anything that he wanted to okay so immediately I gave notice and left so that's a second instance exacerbated by early childhood soul wounding experience and that was a much more serious uh, case for me of drive feral drive to acquire territory by a male then in the neighborhood where I live uh, since I moved into my house over the last yay so many years there have been numerous intrusions of astral bodies of men into my bedroom when I'm asleep now at first I would take this um, pretty seriously um, because I'm a very private person and I don't like strangers in my bedroom you know <laughs> when I'm asleep it bothers me but then as time went on I began to understand uh, about this drive and about uh, how men's unconscious bodies their um, desire elementals will do this while they're asleep without their conscious minds being aware of it being there to check that activity and stop it so uh, it actually over the last year or so it's become much less prevalent it's narrowed itself down to occasional visits from one person or another person of male uh, gender um, so very rarely happens these days and that's a good sign it's a sign that that men are rising to awareness of the feral drive to acquire proper property or territory and so I just thought I would mention that uh, that these things do happen without our awareness especially if we're using hard drugs and uh, or asleep or sound asleep they'll they'll happen it seems to me that the only thing that uh, a man if I were a man right now I would say that the only thing that I would need to do is whenever I was aware that this drive is being exercised I would talk to my desire elemental and and explain to it that the territory that I have is enough it's sufficient and I, that I how much I appreciate my desire elemental for trying to do the best for me so that it retains goodwill and a good relationship to me and nevertheless reigns it hauls it in with regard to territorial aggression so you're uh, that's really all I have to say about it right now I, I hope it's taken in the right light as it's intended kindly 
it's intended to um, to help in, with the understanding of the awakening that's happening right now. Y'all take care. Love you a lot.